No one ever believed these kinds of situations 17 years ago and it was disheartening back then and even now. I'm 31 now but was a teen when I was walking home one sunny day. It was winter but winter in Florida is just a nice cool breeze. I remember holding a Tupperware in my hand that was still hot containing pasta and broccoli my grandma had just made. It was so cool living one block away from my grandma because a quick 10 minute walk meant I could get some really good leftovers. In between my house and her house was a patch of woods but thorns and ticks prevented me from taking a shortcut through. I remember looking down at the sidewalk just as I had reached the middle of the path of the woods to my right. I heard someone ask, hey, where are you going? I looked up and to my left, towards the road, a thin man in a white van with his window rolled down smiled at me. He was driving the opposite direction of the way I was walking. I simply told him I was walking home and continued walking. He started to say, hey, hey. So I looked back to see him hanging out of his driver window. I'll give you a ride home, come here, he says. I kept walking and loudly said, no thanks. I stopped and turned around when I heard him drive away. I began walking again, creeped out, wishing that the woods didn't run so long next to the sidewalk. I remember wishing I was home already. I was super alert now, hearing every critter in the brush to my right rustling leaves and scurrying about. I said to myself out loud, it's just lizards running about, silly. But then I hear a vehicle coming up behind me. Out of fear, I look back and to my horror, it's the same white van with the man still smiling. The van slows down next to me and a big angry looking man flung open the side door and jumped out. I turned to my right and began running as fast as I could into the woods. I was jumping over bushes and long vines, clenching my grandma's Tupperware for dear life. I looked back once and the thick brush of the woods was slowing the big man down. I knew just going straight I would reach my backyard guard by a chain link fence. I remember the thorns and sticks slicing my skin but I couldn't feel the pain. I just kept thinking, RUN! Once I reached the fence I chucked the Tupperware and hoisted myself over, ripping my jeans and I ended up face planting on the ground on the other side. I ran onto my porch and began banging the back door. My dad lets me in and I'm literally panicking, covered in dirt and cuts trying to lock the back door. I felt safe to be back home with my dad and our Rottweilers. He sat me down and started questioning me and immediately called the cops. The cops arrived and took a report and there was only two of them. They said nothing like that happened in my area before and one even told me that lying for attention was against the law. I remember they left and my dad swore he believed me, that I could sleep in his room that night if I wanted. I remember feeling really sad and frustrated about not being believed and going to bed without even eating the pasta with broccoli. It was hard to sleep or go anywhere for months. After that, I was scared the men would still be out there. My dad ended up getting me a cell phone and installing an alarm system to help me feel safe. I still have issues being alone to this day. Two of my friends, Katie and Teresa, were alone together at a park, just hanging out and playing together. Then a white van with tinted windows slowly pulls up to the park. They think nothing of it until two men get out of the car. One man says to the other, grab the kids. Katie and Teresa freak out and run away from the park, but the men get into their van and start following them. The van sped up whenever they sped up. Teresa lived very close to the park, so they reached her house and burst into the door. Katie locked the door and they watched the van through one of the windows. It sat idly on the curb for about five minutes until it slowly left. When I was in high school, I used to take the city bus home from school. I met a lot of strange characters on that bus, but the scariest incident actually happened while I was walking home from the bus stop. In order to get to my house, I have to cross Main Street, walk the length of another, let's call it Grove Street, and cross a one-way road. Once I cross the Main Street, a dingy white van takes the turn onto Grove Street. There's two guys that I can see in the passenger and driver's seat, probably in their mid to late twenties. The guy on the driver's side shouts over to me asking for directions. I shrug at him and pretend I don't know, and then I keep walking. He continues to drive alongside me, asking me questions. The more I ignore him, the more disturbing his questions become. By the time I reach the end of the street, they're asking me what my cup size is and if I want to ride in their van. Thankfully, my godmother lives at the end of Grove Street and her pit bull is wandering the yard. Normally this dog is a complete marshmallow, but by the time I reach the front yard, all 80 pounds of him is slamming against the fence and snarling menacingly at the van. Without hesitation, I hop the fence and threaten to open the gate if the guys don't leave. They speed off and I spent a good 20 minutes trembling and hugging the dog before I felt safe enough to walk the last block home. 